मातृशक्ति ऑन द डायस तुलसी माला जी अनिल जी नीलेष जी बिफोर दिस सेशन स्टार्टेड हैड अ स्मॉल वर्ड विथ अनिल जी अबाउट पी एच कर लिया आपने कहा किस सब्जेक्ट में कर लिया था वो बोल रहे थे क्या कर वाइबल जी वॉज टेलिंग मी ही वॉज डूइंग पी एच डी अंडर अनिल जी एंड इट वॉज ऑन द ब्लैक स्कोल्स मॉडल द ब्लैक स्कोल्स मॉडल हमको 20 साल के पहले प्रोफेसर कनक सभापति जी ने बताया था उसका याद आ गया था देर आर टू प्रोफेसर हु डिवाइज द ब्लैक स्कोल्स मॉडल नाइनटीन सेवन इफ आई रिमेंबर राइट एंड हैविंग रिसीव ब्लैक नोबेल ऑन ब्लैक स्कोल्स थियरी विच वॉज ऑन द स्टॉक मार्केट डेरेवेटिव फंक्शनिंग दे सेड वाई शुड वी डू दिस ए फॉर एप्पल बी फॉर बॉय प्रोफेसर गिरी काय को करने का है वी विल एंटर स्टॉक मार्केट and with the funds that they received from nobel uh, for economics and also from outside they started long term capital management this in 1998 collapsed they went to again teaching as professors but black schools model is still taught in all economic schools the point i'm emphasizing is what we are understanding of economics is probably not economics the subject of economics is still yet to be defined whenever i sit in uh, channels during the budget people say economic reforms honi hai we should do more economic reforms government must indulge in more economic reforms then i ask them what is economic reforms that you want then finally it is like air india ko bechna hai lic ko ipo lana hai mane it is reduced to something very mundane but the discipline of economics today as we see and understand and just as i gave you an example of the black scholes model is well dead and buried there is no economic reforms economics is in need of reforms it's a very important thing the discipline of economics is all about indiscipline of individual it only gives incentive to the individuals to be indisciplined it has never made an a discipline that will suit a cultural or a civilizational society it is only for an atomized society atomized individual so how you react and how you don't react to a particular stimuli is what is basis of economics today let me give you from the fundamental issues what i have understood what would be the day on which we the homo sapiens the animal became men what would be the timeline when what is that event the cataclysmic event that would mean to suggest that from animals we transformed into men civilized men we have discovered so many things we have discovered various philosophies we have broken atoms we have we have discovered fire we have discovered so many things but one institution that defined that quantum leap in our journey in history is the is the institution of marriage marriage made us from animals transformed us from animals into civilized men and when i mean marriage i mean monogamous marriage is a very important thing when when civility has to enter us and we have to become restrained the restraint was on the alpha male from taking multiple partners naturally biologically 105 male babies are born for 100 female babies the five either become like swami vivekananda or something like that but most of it naturally it is one boy for a 
baby girl. I come from Tamil Nadu. The Tamil culture is Uruvanuku Uruti, meaning one man for a lady for a man. But if this is broken, and one man takes multiple ladies, three men, four men, five men are left without a female partner in life. And if you do a research in World Terrorism Index, places that practice monog uh, polygamy, which is the opposite of monogamy, are places which are inflicted by enormous amount of terrorism. Now take this example forward to, an, to a society where there is no restraint, where there is no culture, where there is no respect for rule of duties. Sir, you talked about rule of law. I am talking about the rule of duty. Now, this is what was classical economics all about. When classical economics were taught or were written were, or were uh, decoded, this was the fundamental thing that uh, there will be a household, there will be a family, there will be a, a husband, there will be a wife, they will take care of their children and they will, they will raise their family and there will be a duty to the society, to the community, to the state. Everything followed from this. Suddenly what happened? There was so much of confluence of technology, of breakdown of barriers, culture, science. So many things happened. And even in 1950s, even in 1950s, single wed mother were not given houses in a city like New York. Forget Belgaum, forget uh, Chennai. A single unwed mother would not get a house in New York. Old timers would know there was an actress called Ingrid Bergman. She was a Swedish actress. She had a love affair with a director, Italian director called Rosoloni, Paolo Rosoloni. She had a child outside of wedlock. And she wanted to apply for visa to America. And the Americans said, no way we are going to give you visa. This is in 1950s. Whenever you have a love with an Italian, there is always a problem. You must understand that. <laughs> and the children create much more problem. <laughs> but the same America, which had so much of cultural restraint, and that, if you look at it between 1825 to, say, 1950s, a period of 120, 130, 150 years, beginning where Tocqueville uh, and others talk about a glorious America, to an America that in 1950s becomes the role model of the world and has so much of cultural restraint, in 2008, in a Massachusetts school, there were students, girl students, all in high school. They rapidly went to the next uh, neighborhood health, primary health center, and were seeking pregnancy test. The director of the health institute got alarmed. So he phoned the principal and said, there are too much of school children, more than average coming to my health center, asking for pregnancy test. This is despite the fact that the school had a condom vending machine inside the school. So you can understand what is the debasement that has gone in, in America in 2008, Massachusetts. Then the principal uh, does some investigation. He finds out, to his horror, that the children have entered into a pregnancy pact. Who will become pregnant first? Not a laughing matter. This will come to Chennai in 25, Belgaum in 30. This is the structure of family getting destroyed. The mother cannot go and ask the son, what have you done? The father cannot ask the daughter, what has she done? Otherwise, 9-11 press, police will arrest 
we have given an individualism, such rampant individualism has been created. When uh, in another 10 days, music season will start in Chennai. Many of my NRA friends will come to enjoy music. I don't know this year whether we are having live concerts or not. But suddenly when we are talking, he will go and bash his child. The child will be playing something, no? Then you will ask him, why did you bash your child suddenly? He August not homework in August. He August not homework in August. Why do you kill him in December? If he will kill him, he will take police. So we have to chide this fellow. Now only I remembered. A father cannot chide a child. But this, has, this is not only a cultural matter. America runs huge deficits because of its culture. A point that I think somebody like Gurmurti ji has made it several times over. And the whole world has now started getting hooked on to this trade exports to America. That American consumption, American demand is now a global responsibility. And China is hooked to the American consumption that China gives America goods. America gives China dollar. This Chinese don't know how to consume it. They give back the dollar to America. America gives pro note back to China. This is called globalization. China doesn't want disturbance of this. America doesn't want to disturb this. If China stops exporting to America, America will have huge inflation. And America, if it stops importing from China, Chinese factories will come to an end. They are like two drunkards. If you put arm in arm, they will go on. But they will never fall. But one of them falls, the other will definitely fall. This is a peculiar thing. Economics term this as two drunkard theory. And this enormous amount, I think America has spent something like 22 trillion dollars in 60s to take care of the black families alone, which are now completely degenerated and they have only single mothers. Single parent children are around 80% in the blacks, around 45-50% amongst the whites. And they have spent 22 trillion dollars in the last 60 years, only on this program, where a girl child at the age of 15 or 18 can become pregnant, she would not know who, is, who the father of her child is, and she can be given uh, accommodation, food stamps, a reasonable amount of living. And this bill is taken by the most disciplined American through a mechanism called taxes. And it is this that is creating a model for the world that we are finding it difficult to come out of. So the first thing that we as Indians have to do to the world is to rewrite economic textbooks. Economic textbooks have to be rewritten as if there is no discipline of economics, there is only indiscipline of economics. So we have created this welfare state, we have created these programs, we have created many of these social uh, structure program basically modeled on the West, which is basically modeled on an individual who has gone astray, who has completely atomized, who has nothing more to do, but to, but to degenerate himself as an animal. That is why in 2008, after the great economic crisis happened, in 2009, June or July, the Economist comes out with an article which says, much of the economics that is taught in our colleges and universities in the last 30 years is spectacularly useless at best, harmful at worst. This is not me telling, this is the Economist. So how do we move forward? And this is what I call as a civilizational burden on us. 
Many of us would have read the Aesop's uh, fables, where the ant and the grasshopper is taught probably in class one, two, three. And the ant, as you all would know, would be working hard in summer. And uh, the grasshopper will be dancing in the whole of summer. Winter comes, the ant, over, ant has got enormous food at its place. The grasshopper is shivering and it dies. And the moral of the story is, you know, do your hard work when the sun shines. But I have a new twist to this Aesop stable, stable, uh, fable. Today, if the grasshopper is shivering, NDTV will go there. Grasshopper shivering. What is the Prime Minister doing? <laughs> Look at Ant. The inequity Gini coefficient index is rising in this country. After 2014. Everything is 2014. Like uh, uh, Adam and Eve's uh, beginning. Everything in our country is 2014. Pre-2014, post-2014. And there will be discussion in the parliament, prevention of cruelty to grasshopper act. And probably the government may also come out with a surcharge on income tax to see that the grasshoppers are protected. Ants will find their way to a place where their hard work, where their disciplined way of life, where their dignity is protected. And finally, we will be left with a nation of grasshoppers. So we have to go back to our fundamental civilizational value. As uh, Nileshdi very rightly said, we have to learn to respect the Adanis and Ambanis. Of course, that names are very catchy and probably hits the headlines. Probably you want to hit the headlines tomorrow. And that is why you suggested the name. But I would say even Sachin Bhai or MR Venkatesh, who are doing their jobs, who are carrying on their small businesses and giving employment. And in this, the most fundamental thing, apart from rewriting the laws of economics, is that when we drafted the constitution, we wrote it Probably you have to go back and it is, and let me make it clear, I'm not criticizing anybody or finding fault with what the document says. Article 265, which deals with taxation, was given to a committee of three people under the chairmanship of Nalini Ranjan Sarkar, who sat down between November 17th to December 5th. Today is December 5th. 1947 they gave the report and they said very simply taxes no taxes shall be levied without the authority of the state but we did not ask a fundamental question what is a state what will be its job what should be the idea of a state that we want to create should, be the, should it be the omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient state that we have created? Or it should be a residual state? We were promised, and beginning people like Mahatma Gandhi who promised us that this state will be a Ramarajya. We were never promised socialist, secular, democratic republic. And Ramarajya is a place where there is less of Ram and more of Rajya. That means individual duties precede the duties of the state. That is why Nilesh Bhai says correctly that if you buy gold, what is it that you are doing? He asks a very important question. That we cannot diverse ourselves from the uh, fortunes of the state and say the state must deliver. And this has become a national addiction for us. For a country, for a nation which is rooted to Karmani Vadikara said, this is appalling. We are a duty-bound civilization. And Article 1 of the Constitution says, India, that is Bharat. 
Probably we are one of those very rare countries where we have got two names. Raju alias Kumar. And when we are Bharatiya, we talk about our duties. But the moment we become Indians, we talk about our rights. And these rights, as I said, the omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent state is a Leviathan model created by Thomas Hobbes based on Christian theology. And he saw all men as wicked. And here I include women too. He says all men are wicked. All uh, men are brutish. Men are selfish. And to counterbalance them, we require a strong state. But Swami Vivekananda says every soul is divine. Look at the contrast. And it is Charles Boyce who writes a beautiful book who says born bad. He says the entire Christian theology of Adam and Eve creating the first sin, committing the first sin, is so much imbibed or in, uh, embedded in the Christian psyche that every Christian writer, whether it is Thomas Hobbes, as I said about a great political thinker, Karl Marx or Sigmund Freud or uh, Richard Dawkins in case of uh, uh, evolution biology, all of them have something to say that individuals are bad and you require an external agent. This external agent became so big and to counterbalance it, we started this fundamental rights. And during emergency, we found out how Palkiwala brilliantly argued and came up with this concept of fundamental rights as being an inalienable part of this constitution. But time has come to see whether we have to relook at the constitution from a fundamental duties perspective also. Article 51A is there in our constitution. It is like a charter of a Lions Club or a Rotary Club. It has to be made more actionable and we need to start looking at our constitution from a civilizational perspective of duties. And in this, it is very important that when we shift from fundamental rights to fundamental duties and balance the two, fundamental rights must be there. It, it is not that we must dissolve it, it must be there. We must also rethink about the nature of the state. What should be the state? Rajya kya hona chahi? Article 12, in all its majesty, what it should do and what it should not do. So it has been left to the courts to interpret. And we became a welfare state by interpretation. And welfare state means it, it wants to give grocery to my bedroom. But it also, we also want to shout that your uh, privacy is a fundamental right as described by Honorable Supreme Court in Puttaswami. You want grocery in your bedroom. No problem with that. But you also are asking for privacy. Somewhere we have to redraw the roles of the state, the duties of the citizenry. The Western idea has been constantly being rooted to a broken self, which requires an, except, a, a, an external agent for salvation. That is why in Christianity, they always address the pastor will always address somebody as a pavi hale, as if you are all sinners. And that is Christian theology. I have no issues with that. But to put it into my constitution, I have serious objections. And I don't want a constitution that presumes all of us are sinners. I don't want a constitution that presumes that we will be lawbreakers. I don't want a constitution that presumes all of us are brutish and selfish. In fact, most of our laws are created like that. In fact, this concept whenever we talk about and deal with constitution, it, it leads us to a belief that we have imported not only alien ideas, alien institutions, but alien ways of living and trying to juxtapose it on ourselves. And that is why we are struggling on both the issue of efficiency and equality. If only we are able to understand Swaraj doesn't mean only political Swaraj, it means social Swaraj, it means 
in Swaraj at an individual level. That's why Tilak started about Purna Swaraj. That is why would, my prayer would be, usually people end a speech with something more flourish, on a flourish or, or on a uh, joke or something. But my prayer would be that it is time that we distinguish between the two theological understanding. One where there is a broken self of the Christian theology, where one there is an elevated self. The original name of Mahabharata was called Jaya. And Jaya means victory over self. And that is what is the ultimate objective of life in our system. How much do I win over myself? My enemy is not anybody else. My enemy is myself. And how do I conquer myself? And unless the political alignment and the individual alignment are aligned through a political process, the individual and the national goals are aligned, I would shudder to think that we would not be progressing. So we should relook at the way. And probably my prayer would be in another 25 years, where, would be, where we would be celebrating our 100th year of independence, probably we should have a constitution which will reflect the genius of this country, the civilizational values of this country, the ethos of this country. With this, I will stop. Thank you.